Welcome to 5 Minute School. In today's video we're going to be discussing gluconeogenesis. So what is the purpose of gluconeogenesis? It maintains a constant supply of glucose as the main metabolic fuel by generating glucose from non-carbohydrate sources like glycerol, amino acids and lactate. Without the intake of these carbohydrates, liver glycogen will deplete after 10 to 18 hours. So for short duration fasts, for example from from night time until breakfast in the morning, 90% of the gluconeogenesis which occurs is in the liver and the remaining 10% occurs in the kidney. Prolonged fasting for a longer duration of time results in 60% of the gluconeogenesis occurring in the liver and 40% in the kidneys. So which substrates are involved in gluconeogenesis? Well we mentioned glycerol. Glycerol, glycerol is released during hydrolysis of triacylglycerols in adipose tissue and it's delivered by the blood to the liver. It's phosphorylated by glycerol kinase to glycerol phosphate, which is then oxidized by glycerol phosphate dehydrogenase to dihydroxyacetone phosphate, which is an immediate molecule which is used in glycolysis. Now, adipocytes can't phosphorylate glycerol as they don't have glycerol kinase, which is why it must be transported to the liver first. The second one we're going to talk about, the second substrate involved, is amino acids. And they are usually derived from the hydrolysis of tissue proteins. Now, alpha keto acids, like alpha ketoglutarate, are derived from the, me me the metabolism sorry, of glucogenic amino acids. Now these alpha keto acids can enter the citric acid cycle and form oxaloacetate which is a direct precursor of phosphoenol pyruvate. And finally the last one we're going to talk about is lactate. It's released into the blood by exercising skeletal muscle and by cells without mitochondria like red blood cells. And once it's in the blood it's taken up by the liver, reconverted into glucose and released back into the circulation. The next video we'll be discussing the reactions 